wake of a murder, they discover the key to a mystery. That statue head, what's it doing buried there on the bottom of your closet? That began in World War II. We're surrounded. Hold tight. That is a direct order. On September 26th. All you got to do is believe. Spike Lee, the director of Inside Man, invites you to solve a mystery 40 years in the making. I know. You know what? Miracle at St. Anna. It's a movie about miracles. I'll just call it epic. And it's all about character. See this little thing here? It'll make you invisible. Give you the strength of five people. You ain't got to own nothing. You ain't got to be a big somebody. All you got to do is believe in it, boy. Go on, boy. Go on. Puoi girare la tua testa così? Guarda! God made this thing here through man's hand. But the Lord gave it shape and purpose. And through this little thing here, God gives you something else, boy. You know what it is? I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you. It's a secret. Miracles. Now what's a miracle? There are many miracles in this film. This boy that is found, it's a story about this um, group of American soldiers, black American soldiers during World War II that come to Italy and try to liberate Italy. While being embedded behind enemy lines, they learn a lot about each other. They interact with these Italian villagers who actually embrace them and treat them like men, um, which is something that they have not experienced back home. With the heroic part about these guys, that even though they have different opinions, uh, whenever there's a fight, almost like in school or being, you know, brothers, biological brothers, you all stick together. This film is a, a lot of things. It's a World War II film. It's a mystery. It deals with historic events. It's a story of compassion, of love. I think that we've done a great job of showing man's inhumanity to his fellow brother and sister. I'm Staff Sergeant Aubrey Stamps. We got a boy that needs help. Dove l'avete trovato? Sulla montagna. Chi è? Lo conosci? No, no, non mi pare di conoscerlo. Ma può stare qui finché io starà bene, eh? Fact, tell them we're taking the boy to a hospital. They can come too. They need to evacuate anyway. We'll escort him down the mountain. I would not say there's a lead in this film. This is, by definition, an ensemble piece. The leads are Derek Luke, Michael Ely, Laz Alonzo, okay. and Omar Vincent Miller. Special Italiano Caramella. Derek has been uh, like our spiritual leader of sorts, and he would pray for us every day on the way to work. And, you know, we all believe that it was very, very effective <laughs> because there were some dangerous conditions. Michael Ely has been great. He's been, like, phenomenal to work with. Day to day, he and I, we would rehearse scenes, whether we were working or not working. He, he's great, he's, he's a generous actor. He's not selfish whatsoever. He'll give so that you can give back. It's a, it's a joy, it's a play. I work with Mike Ely any day of the week. Laz is great to work with. He's somebody who listens. He's somebody who's a leader in his own right, and yet he's not stuck or stubborn to anything that he's gonna do. The four of us work really hard on our own chemistry and our own communication, and it just really got us to, to be very used to how the other one moves. It just got to the point where when the four of us were together, we were almost just falling into our characters. Fabricio! Once Bishop and Train get to the, to the bank, you gotta pay with them. She the one selling whole cakes and beer, Bishop? You're gonna be looking up this way, and then you turn your head because there's gonna be two explosions down there. One beat, sniper, 
One shot, or should we, maybe two shots. Boom, boom. After the second shot, MG42 starts to fire. All hell breaks loose. The physical conditions that these guys had to go through, some of which we had to go through, including working in the Circio River, and when it's, you know, 25, 30 degrees, that stuff is no joke. Spike on the set, you know, he's a powerful director. I mean, there's no question who said it is. You know, he's not afraid to get his hands dirty or his feet. You know, I mean, the, the first 10 days that we shot was in the Circio River. And, uh, you know, a lot of directors will direct from a video village and come out, give the direction, and go back under the nice warm tent, you know, with heaters. Spike was in the water with us. I've, I've learned that working with Spike is a totally different experience than I've had with any other director because he has this team version of directing. Spike's like a coach. He's like a basketball coach. And you are like on the bench, and you don't know when he's going to say, go in the game. You just don't know. So you got to be ready at all times. OK. You and me, you got to get to that tree. OK? Uh-huh. All right. Go. <laughs> Go, 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 go. Get down, get down, get down. <clears throat> oh, oh, Lord. Oh, oh, I'm coming up yonder. Meet me, Jesus. Shut up. Oh, Bishop, they got you, too. No. Yes, we dead, Bishop. Listen to me. Bishop, we dead. No, listen to me. You was dead, OK? But I brought you back. Now, you ain't dying until I get my money. You owe me $1,400. These guys deserve a lot of respect for what they did. And whatever physical prep that I had to do or anybody else had to do for the film is nothing in comparison to what actually went on. Most of it was shot natural light. Spent three months in Tuscany, final month in Rome on the world-famous stages of Cenocita. While we were there, several older Italians came up to me and said they had fond memories of the Buffalo Soldiers. I remember one woman came up to me and said that she was alive because some Buffalo Soldier met her mother, who was carrying her as an infant. And he was able to take her back to uh, headquarters and give her, you know, a penicillin shot. I'm not sure of what it was, but anyway, it saved her life. And uh, so, people of that generation have many fond memories of the Buffalo Soldiers. The 92nd Division after the war, the the professional achievements of many of the soldiers of the 92nd Division reads like a who's who in America. Really, some of them became architects, senators, uh, Senator uh, Edward Brooks from, uh, from Massachusetts, uh, the late Judge James Watson of Harlem. One federal court trade plaza is named after him. He was the highest ranking federal judge in, in uh, this area when he died uh, a couple of years back. Uh, architects, painters, artists, professors, teachers, uh, musicians. Jackie Robinson at one point was a member of the 92nd Division. Um, it was a division that was composed of some highly talented individuals. But at the end, they, they do it. They take the boy, they run, and they, we don't know how, um, end up in this village. And uh, in this village, they find something that maybe they didn't find back home. They find freedom, friendship, um, love, understanding. So it's a story about the communication between these two different worlds.